Hey everyone, it's Rusta. I um, just wanted to make a little video showing a cool turn order you can use for the Seymour fight. Uh, I think it's pretty reliable and has some nice some nice features to it compared to what we currently do. So for this turn order you give Yuna this uh, agility here after the menu before uh, Crawler. So she has 15 agility. So let's see what the actual turn order looks like. So uh, in the normal strategy you haste Brotherhood talk, but here I think it's a little bit better to Brotherhood first. Uh, the idea behind this is you push the point in the battle when Titus is uh, third to fourth turn. His turn after talking happens, which is nice because it means that uh, Yuna and Kamari will get turns before him, giving them chances to uh, heal him if he gets trimity. So, if we look at the CTB gauge, we'll see that Yuna and Kamari both get turns before him. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually have Yuna change weapon. Um, this is to help line up the turns for Anima. So Yuna and Kamari still get turns before him, despite that. So if, you know, the Guados just didn't do anything, but if the Guados, uh, you know, if they Shrimidied anyone, uh, if they Shrimidied Yuna or Titus, Kamari could heal it. And if they Shrimidied Kamari, his turn order is not important. So it doesn't really matter what he does here. So just do whatever's fastest. In this case, just defend. And now... What we're going to do is bring in Auron and defend. So now Auron's turn is lined up for Titus to get four turns after Anima. And then we can Spiral Cut here. And so the usual trick is to swap Titus for Auron and uh, change weapons. Uh, Auron and Waka have almost the same agility, so we can just use Waka here instead. So the turns went line up a little bit, a little bit better this way. So Waka and Arn are both lined up to have turns immediately after Anima, and now Kamari can steal like normal. And now it doesn't matter who who Anima hits. Um, so if Arn or Waka got hit, it'd be fine. We can switch in Titus, attack, and then the other one can switch in for Riku. So the cool thing about this is that. Now, since Yuna got her turn before Anima was summoned, she doesn't say her voice line, which is, Oh, Faith, lend me strength. And now we're also guaranteed having Riku in the party, so she's definitely going to get overdrive. So yeah, that's... This has the cool property that Riku's guaranteed overdrive, you skip the voice line, and Kamari and Yuna both get turns before Titus, so you should be safe from that's one and sometimes even two Shrimity's landing. Um, the other thing I will say is with this strategy, it's actually possible for, uh, so let me just set up really quick. So he hits Yuna. So now both Guados have their turns right now. Um, or sorry, right, right. So, so both Guados have their turns immediately after Yuna here. So I'm going to change weapon. It's technically possible for them to both target Yuna and for Yuna to die. Maybe we can get that. Ah, Shremity. Okay, so if this Guado hit her also, she would die. Um, Kamari can just Phoenix down her, and then her turn is lined up at the point it should be to swap Titus back in. So you can just leave her in the party, um, swap Titus for Waka, change weapon, and then these two will be lined up to... Uh, you know, to kill Anima. You'll have to bring back Yuna and switch her out, uh, you know, in the last phase of Seymour, so you might not be guaranteed the Riku Overdrive, but you'll definitely be fine. But otherwise, when the Shermany lands, Kimari can just fix it, and then we can do the same thing I said before. Defend. this time. Oh, no, I'm good. There you go. That's all there is to it. Guaranteed several steals. Guaranteed Riku Overdrive. Um, well, not guaranteed if you crit there, but yeah. Seems like a good turn order. So it should be relatively safe for Shrimity. 
yeah so uh if you have any questions just post in the ff discord and we'll talk about it